We are back, baby. It has been uh, it's been a couple weeks. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna just uh, dance around that. A lot of people, I feel like, would just skip over anytime they skip some uploads, but uh, not me. I'm gonna call attention to it right at the beginning, even if you didn't notice. I'm gonna call attention to it mainly because I um I love doing this podcast. Okay, this is a health and wellness focus podcast. Okay. We talk about obviously weight loss. We talk about working out, gym culture, diet culture, mental health. Uh, We talk about all these things, family, life, maybe even some current events. Do you know what I mean? We're really going to dissect the conflict in the Ukraine. (laughs) I'm obviously kidding Um, because you like you need one other person in your life talking about that. Um, very scary. Do I have all of the anxiety about the U- Ukraine Russia uh, conflict? Absolutely. Am I worried for the world that my kids are going to grow up in because of who knows who's going to drop what nukes? Yes. I'm always nervous. Um, no, that actually, um, that's not a joke. It stresses me out. Anyway. <laughs> We're hitting it right at the beginning. But what I was trying to say is uh, this podcast, because it's it's so focused on those topics, it really helps me throughout the week to just sit down and basically talk to myself. Because I know you can't see this, but I, I have a monitor right above me where I can see myself. I've got another monitor over here where I can see myself and the audio waves. Okay. I am in the house by myself, solo, nobody, except my two dogs, Bailey and Bruxy. Besides them, I am alone. And so it is a really special time for me because I am almost never alone. You know what I mean? Um, As a parent, you don't get very much alone time, if any. It's usually in the car ride in between errands. You know what I mean? That's your alone time. So this podcast is really special to me because I do it when I'm alone. I do it, you know, it's it's not really a therapy session, but it's about as close as you can get. Because typically in a therapy session, you have someone who's licensed and like a smart person. And then you have me, um, not that. So, yeah. Needless to say, I'm excited we're back. Also back is Liquid Death. I am fully addicted to this now. I <laughs> I drink too many. I probably drink, and I'm ashamed to say this, nah, like two or three a day. It's not good. I don't know. Maybe it is good. I don't think it's good. It's certainly not cost effective. Just get normal water. I have free water sitting upstairs, but no. I go to the garage, and I grab myself Liquid Death. All right, I'm not doing that again because when I did that the last time, my throat hurt for like two weeks. I'm not kidding. Mm. But it's the best, you guys. I love it. I love it. Okay, we got a lot to talk about. And like I said, it's been a minute since I've done this podcast. And so I've got a lot to get off my chest. I've got a lot of frustrations. We're going to get into that. I'm going to talk about binge eating again, the darker sides of binge eating. I'm going to talk about how does how does one lose weight uh, 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 these days? You know what I mean? How does one get started? Because everyone's got an opinion. And uh, I've got a lot of opinions about their opinions. <laughs> uh, we're going to do a QA. and a I've got some huge life news that I was not going to announce. But I'm just like, what am I even waiting for? Let's just get this news out there. Uh, but first, I have a little funny anecdote. Okay, I was on an airplane. Now, for fat people, airplanes are, um, there are arch nemesis. It is a small enclosed space where we are right up next to the other people, okay? It's usually way too warm to be a fat person in an airplane, and uh, it is just like a cause of massive anxiety. To this day, Thinking about getting on an airplane, I'm like, oh my God, don't get a middle seat. Don't get a middle seat. Don't get a middle seat. And oh, guess what? I got a middle seat and it's the worst. Um, Because when you are obese, being on an airplane, I mean, could you think of a worse place to be? I can't. (laughs) Like it's so 
bad. It's so bad. And if you are obese, leave it in the comments. Tell me your horror stories with a freaking airplane being on an airlines. Okay. Here's a, here's an example. I was like 16 or uh, no, that's a lie. <laughs> I was much older because I was with Meredith and I wasn't with my mom. Um, I was with my second mom because Meredith takes care of me, basically. Uh, thank God for her. Uh, um, so, yeah, my uh, I, I'm, I'm on a trip with Meredith, my wife, and we sit down and I have to... I, I pull the seatbelts up, okay, and this is this is the moment, all right? This is one of the most stressful moments as a fat person on an airplane. You sit down. You finally make it all the way there. You're obviously pouring sweat already. You're worried that you're going to sweat on someone else. You're worried that you're going to start smelling, and other people are going to start to smell you, and then you're going to start to get looks, okay? The other thing, the looks on an airplane, because as you're walking down the aisle, everyone's making eye contact with you coming, and, and they're, you know they're thinking, Please, please, for the love of God, please don't let him sit next to me. Please, please don't let this massive human sit next to me. And they might not be thinking that, but because you're a fat person, you're filled with anxiety and you're thinking, they're thinking that, and it's just not a good time for anyone, okay? So you've already made it through the aisle of shame, okay? You finally get to your seat, and now for the encore of the performance, you grab the seatbelt, guess what? Doesn't click. It's not long enough. Oh, yeah! That's it, dude. It's the worst feeling in the world. It's the worst feeling in the world, and I've had to do it twice. I've had to get a seatbelt extender twice, okay? So you find out your seatbelt doesn't fit. You got to you gotta raise your, your big old hand in the air and be like, um, I'm going to need it. And, and of course, you're trying to do this as quietly as possible because you have to say to another person, hi, this contraption, this safety harness that is made to fit people doesn't fit me because I'm too big. And that freaking sucks. I'm making light of this, but I've literally had like full blown meltdowns in an airplane bathroom because of how big I am, <laughs> which is hilarious that that's where I choose to go, like feel safe to cry because of course in there, I'm just like this, you know what I mean? It's, you're just so bunched up. So when I was on this vacation with Meredith, I raise my hand and I say, hi. I need a seatbelt extender. And this freaking flight attendant, do you think, what do you think she would do at this moment? Do you think maybe she would handle this with some grace and walk to wherever they store the extra extenders and grab an extender and bring it back to me? Like maybe kind of hidden under her hand, like, oh, here you go. There you go, sweetheart. Okay, anything you need, okay? You know, something like that, right? Maybe not the kiss, especially because I'm sitting next to my wife. <laughs> I mean, at any time, okay? Not just if, because my wife's there. At any time, I don't want any kisses. Okay, now this is getting weird. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, uh, so she brings me the, the seatbelt extender. That's how you would think. That, right? That's how you would think someone would bring you a seatbelt extender, especially if you ask that way where you're obviously trying to... Um, like quiet the situation. Okay. You're, you're very, you're speaking very lowly. All right. You don't want anyone else to know, even though they all know you don't want to make a big scene about it. Okay. So what do you think this flight attendant does? <clears throat> hey, um, Mary Sue, can you bring me a, a seatbelt extender right here for B26? All right. Thank you. She'll be right with you. And then keeps walking. Hey, bro. Hey, man. Hey, man. Could we have a little bit of subtlety? Huh? Could we have just, just an ounce of care for the situation that I'm in right now? Now the entire plane knows that your boy needs a seatbelt extender. I think it was like 26. And do you think 
my 26 year old mental state handled that well no he didn't it was a nightmare i was crying <laughs> oh oh dude these are the moments that people don't understand what it means to be fat um and these this is why it's like it's very hard to get this across to like people to um, trainers, to coaches, it's these moments, these deep, deep cut moments where you just don't know what you don't know. And so if you have like, you know, fat clients or you're a nutritionist with fat clients or you're a coach with fat clients or you're a doctor and you have a fat patient, you don't understand how that feels. The shame and ridicule that comes with something like that. And you might be like, yeah, yeah, bro. Well, it's a choice, you fatty. You ate yourself to that, so that's what you get. I see a lot of that online. A lot of that, like, lack of empathy for obese people, for fat people. Uh, that lack of empathy is, like, so hurtful. Like... Yes, it was a choice. Yes, being fat, not in every situation. There's extenuating circumstances where there's medical things that, you know, cause it. But for most of the most of the time, being fat is because of a string of decisions that you have made that have gotten you there. That doesn't still mean that we can't have a little bit of empathy for people that are in that situation because... In that moment, that flight attendant had zero empathy for the situation that I was in. And when I tell you it was the most embarrassing moment of my life, and that even to this day, 10 years later almost, it brings up those same emotions of shame and, and embarrassment and disgust with myself. Those moments are the hardest moments to get over. Those moments are the moments that... I think about all the time when I'm in the gym because those moments hurt the most. When you are, you know, <laughs> this is supposed to be like a fun, uh, just a funny story. And uh, here we are. Um, When you have a moment in your life where you are an outcast, you are the the only in a situation, those are very difficult moments. And when you can walk onto a plane and you know very clearly you are the fattest person on that plane and you have to parade yourself down an aisle knowing full well that everyone is hoping that you don't have to sit next to them. And then you finally get there. And then for that to happen, a, a flight attendant screams out that you need a, a seatbelt extender. Man, it's it's very hard to deal with. And if you can't understand that, if you can't empathize with that, then like, I don't know what else to tell you, man. Like, be nicer, I guess. But like, it's... Uh, it's it's it was one of the hardest moments of my life and that sounds insane but it's stuck it's stuck with me you know what i mean i've had nightmares about that moment you know uh it's it was very difficult and very embarrassing the second time that that happened i was by myself which made it easier because i think the first time that it happened it was hard because it was it was in front of my wife and my wife has always been the, um, oh my God, here we go. My wife has always had to, um, this sounds stupid. My wife has always had to, to be the one to deal with the fat boyfriend and the fat fiance and the fat husband. 
and uh, sometimes I forget, or you know, because she makes me. She makes me sometimes forget that I'm fat or that I was fat and uh, and makes me forget that I looked a certain way because of how uh, great of a person she is. She just makes me forget that because of the way she looks at me. And, oh, my God, dude. And so, um, you know, when you have someone who loves you no matter what uh, – and then a real world situation like that kind of pulls you out of that kind of fantasy world that you live in um, where, you know, to Meredith, I'm her Prince Charming. And that I'm so lucky for. Uh, and but to everyone else on that plane, I wasn't their Prince Charming. I was the fat guy that was going to ruin their flight if I had to sit next to them. And uh, so when a real world situation happens like that and you get pulled out of that fantasy, it is abrupt and it is very hard to deal with. And, uh, you know, I've been I've been very lucky for Meredith to love me no matter what size I was because she's loved me at my lowest weight and she's loved me at my biggest weight because she has been with me for 16 years and so I think that's what makes it the hardest is because she was there and she had to see that. And it was uh, that much more embarrassing because she had to see that. Um, and I just wish she wasn't there. And that's why the second time I honestly barely even remember. I was like, yeah, I'll take a, a seatbelt extender or whatever. Um, thankfully, <laughs> that flight attendant didn't scream it across the plane. But, uh, you know. It's just, uh, I guess, I guess the point I'm trying to make here <laughs> is, uh, let's make the seatbelts bigger, okay? <laughs> can we, can we please just like give us a couple extra inches on the seatbelts, please? Ah, uh, anyway, I that got surprisingly emotional. I I was not anticipating those emotions to come out. I swear to you, I was just trying to tell a funny story about the airplane. <laughs> and, and then I got sidetracked into seatbelts, and then I got sidetracked into shame and disgust <laughs> and marital things. <laughs> like, mm. this is why I love this podcast because these are obviously feelings that I have that are lurking in the background that I don't think about or talk about. Because why would I just walk around, you know, Target talking to people about seatbelt extenders and crying in front of the aisle of kids clothes while I'm shopping for writer, you know, that, cause that would be insane. <laughs> but when you have a podcast, you can talk about these things and it's not so crazy. Uh, wow. So anyway, the, f <laughs> the funny story, the, f the story that I'm trying to get to, is, um, wow, we, uh, Meredith and I took a flight to Austin, Texas, and I'll tell you why we flew to Austin, Texas in a minute, but we were flying to Austin, Texas, we had Olive with us, and Olive, for those of you that don't know, is our four-month-old daughter, um, I also have a almost four-year-old son, which is insane to me. So we're on this flight, and I stand up to, like, kind of stretch out a little bit, all right? And, and I go to the bathroom, and I'm trying to, like, I'm waiting in line for the bathroom. Now, we're on a flight. I don't know what year this plane was from, but the seats are sm even smaller than normal, okay? Thank God I've lost weight <laughs> because there's no way your boy was fitting on that thing, Um there's just no way. And so uh, I, I'm in the seats and I'm just really like, oh, just like tight and my back's all tight. So I'm kind of stretching out. And the girl who's in front of me also waiting for the bathroom says, yeah, it's uh, pretty cramped in here, huh? I'm like, yeah, it's it's pretty tight. And she's a fit girl, right? She's she's pretty fit. And she says, <laughs> she says, she looks at me and she says, yeah, you know, just because she, we're just talking. I'm like, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty tight. And she's like, yeah, I can't even imagine if I was a bigger person. And she like looks at me and, <laughs> and I said, and she meant, 
you know, she meant well, but she looked at me like, oh God, what have I said? She looked, it was sweet. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, let me tell you, it's, uh, it's not fun. It's not fun being a bigger person. And she was like, yeah, <laughs> dude. Oh, she was so, so embarrassed, but like, no need. You know, who doesn't have fumbles of the mouth like that in public in a situation where, you know, it's also the plane was quiet. Everyone was sleeping. It was a super early flight. So everyone's sleeping. And like the fact that, oh, dude, it was just so funny. I felt so bad for the girl because I wasn't offended at all. I thought it was hilarious. And that's why I started this whole story in the first place. And then we got on a tangent there. Your boy went on a tear. Ugh. Now I got the sniffles. This is great. This is great. So anyway, that was that very, I thought that was going to be very brief and, uh, and we're 20 minutes in, you know what I mean? And that's how this podcast freaking goes. Now let's just keep breezing through the reason that Meredith and I were flying to Austin, Texas is because this summer, <laughs> coming this summer, the Reyes family is moving to Austin, Texas. We are moving. We are moving, baby. We are a moving. We are picking up our stakes and we are moving to Texas. It's right, buddy. We're moving to Texas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I could not be more thrilled. I am very excited. Very excited. Obviously, I've been to Texas. I've been to Austin a lot uh, for work. I've been to Austin for BPN. And I've just fallen in love. I've absolutely fallen in love with the area. And the housing in Texas is so much more affordable than the housing in California. I don't know if you needed a news alert for that. Beep, 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 beep. News alert. Texas is more affordable than California. So we are moving. And uh, <laughs> I got a lot of questions on Instagram when people saw that I was going to Texas. They were like, are you working for BPN? Bear Performance Nutrition. It's the... Oh, it's right there. Uh, no, I am not working for BPN. I love my job. I, I am not leaving my job. Um, my company is actually based in Austin as well. So it like is perfect. Um, but it, it does make it much easier to do more content with the BPN team. And, you know, it. That's that was like a bonus more than a, a reason of why we're moving to Austin. I love the area. And the reason we were taking that flight was so that Meredith, because she had already agreed to move and she had never been to Austin. <laughs> so that that trip was actually extremely important because that was like our feeler. You know, Meredith, we, we wanted to go see all the neighborhoods. We toured a bunch of schools for the kids. Um, we checked out a bunch of houses and we're just like getting a feel for the place. And thankfully, really, it was really up to Meredith to decide like, Hey, is this a place you want to live? Cause I've kind of already had my heart set on it. So please say yes. <laughs> kind of a thing. And thankfully she loved it just as much as I did. Um, and yeah, so in, uh, coming this July 1st, myself, Meredith, Olive Ryder, Bailey and Brexy Reyes were all coming to Austin, Texas. And whew, I never thought I was going to leave California. Uh, but it's just like if we ever want to have something that we can pass down to our kids, it's just so not feasible here right now in the moment. Uh, I don't know what the future is going to bring. We might move back. We might move somewhere else. But... Right now, my gut is telling me to get out to Austin, and that's what I'm going to do. That's what we're going to do, and I'm pretty freaking thrilled about it. I got to be honest. I'm really, really excited. So we're going to rent for a little while uh, while we look for a home and then hopefully buy a home relatively soon. So 
that's where we're at, man. That's the big news. That's the huge news. I mean, you know, that might not be any, a big deal to you. But for me, this is like a world changing. Trying to move two kids, two dogs, and a wife across the country is proving to be a monumental task, okay? Just the sheer, <laughs> man, okay, I'm going to tell you this real quick. This is going to be a very quick antidote. Okay, because we love to do our tangents on this podcast, but this tangent has to be said. If you are planning to move, if you live in California, you're planning to move anywhere, okay? Um, it is literally the cost to get a rental car from California and drive it to Texas is four thousand dollars cheaper. If you were moving from Arizona to Texas, so your boy being, being, being the, the mindful guy that he is, he's flying to Phoenix, Arizona. I am getting the rental truck there. I am driving from Phoenix back here to Anaheim, packing the truck up, truck up, and then driving from Anaheim all the way to Texas and saving $4,000. Is that not crazy, dude? I found this on a Reddit thread, okay? On a Reddit thread of, of like tips for people who were moving across country and stuff. I could not believe it. And then when I checked with the company, I'm like, oh my God, it is literally $4,000 cheaper to fly to a different state and get the truck there. Crazy. So anyway, uh, I promised that was going to be a quick tangent and it was. But yeah, if you uh, if you know Austin, if you know the Austin area, you're in Austin, hit your boy up. I would love to meet up. I would love to find out all the uh, ins and outs of the locals. You know what I mean? I want to know the spots to hit, the spots to avoid. I'm very excited. Um, very, very, very excited. So we, uh, yeah, like I said, July 1st. So that being said, this whole area behind me, my office is going to be changing significantly just out of frame. Okay. <laughs> just out of this little tiny box that you're watching me in is complete chaos. I literally just hit something because that is how enclosed I am in my own space. I've got boxes. I've got bubble wrap and tape and trash and just shit everywhere. Okay. <laughs> And I have two kids and two dogs, so some of that might be actual shit. But um, no, I I just I, there's it's a mess. It's a complete mess, and I'm going crazy. So the sooner we move, the better. But right now we're doing a lot of like goodwill stuff, selling stuff on Facebook Marketplace, trying to get rid of a bunch of stuff, and uh, and yeah, trying to get that moving truck as light as possible. So that's the huge news in our world. I'm very excited about it, and I hope. Uh, I hope you are too. <laughs> All right. So I've decided we're actually going to skip the dark side of binge eating. I'm going to save that for another episode because that's a whole like long topic that I know I'm going to have like 50 million tangents. So we're going to save that. If you have any questions about binge eating or questions about the dark side or experiences with the dark side of binge eating, leave them in the comments because I will bring them up on that show. I will talk about it next week. So please, if you have experience with binge eating, you've talked about binge eating or you know someone who's who's uh, dealt with binge eating, you have like the dark side of it, tell me. I'm going to I'm gonna get deep into that. That's a whole other thing. So the, the, the thing that I want to talk about is the overwhelming amount of information that's out there and for people who are trying to get started, okay? I was involved with an experience that made me think like, wow, it is so hard to just get people started because everyone's talking, everyone's giving their opinions, okay? And it is very frustrating as someone who's gone through it multiple times. I can't even tell you how many times I've had this is the time I'm starting my weight loss journey moments of my life, uh, that it's just like, there's so much bullshit out there. It's like, what do I need to do? Tell me what I need to do. Just write it down and just, you know, let's make this sim more simple. Okay. And the reason for this topic is I'm at the gym. I come into the sauna. It's packed full of dudes. Okay. And everyone's quiet. One of the dudes lifts his head up. He's a He's a pretty big guy. 
And he says, oh, Tony, I watched your Obese to Marathon documentary. Bro, huge, like, huge motivation. I'm like, oh, my God, that's so cool. I immediately, now, if you know me, I know I complain all the time about people talking in the sauna. However, this moment's different. We're talking about health and fitness, and, you know, we're, we're making a connection here, so it's like it's all good. I take my headphones out. I'm like, I'm invested. This guy is starting his weight loss journey. He has, he, he wants help. He wants to talk. He watched my Obese to Marathon documentary. We are talking. I'm going to be here for this guy. I'm going to support this guy. So, <laughs> in case you're wondering, like, oh, I bet you were, you know, like, annoyed. I really wasn't. I love interactions like this. Now, when you try to sell me your multi-level marketing scheme in the sauna, I'm going to have a different reaction, okay? Because that also happened, if you follow my Instagram stories, that also happened to me twice. Whoa. Okay? Very frustrating. Anyway, so this guy's like, hey, Tony, uh, you know, loved your documentary. I'm starting my weight loss journey. Like, you know, I'm trying to do this, this, and this. Like, what do you recommend? And then the conversation goes a little bonkers because all the guys in the gym, in the, in the sauna, have their own opinions that they're dumping in. And guess what? None of them have been overweight. None of them have been obese. None of them know the struggles. None of them are trainers. None of them are nutritionists. None of them have any any like any actual none of them have even lost weight they're all like fit dudes and there's something about that that drives me crazy and i'm not saying you have to have been fat to give advice to people who are fat i'm saying stay in your lane okay because the advice that these guys were giving my boy was straight out of like 1993 Weight Watchers edition, okay? Like, it was it was insane. They were like, bro, let me tell you, you just got to start running. You got to start, you got to cut out all the carbs. You got to start intermittent fasting. You got to track everything. You got to eat apple cider vinegar. You got to have shots of green. You got to have doing this. And then they brought up steroids. They're like, have you tried this? Have you tried that? Maybe your testosterone's low, bro. Maybe you need to jack up a little testosterone. And I'm like, oh, this conversation is getting very wacky. We're off the rails now. Everyone's saying stuff. And now my boy, this very vulnerable soul, my 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 buddy, my brother in arms here, is listening to everyone and is like, oh, okay, oh, I don't do that. Oh, okay, don't don't do this. Oh, only eat one meal a day. Oh, only f- fast every day. Oh, do this. Okay, and it's like, hey, man, it's too much. Okay, it's too much. It's very frustrating to literally witness what happens online every single day. Everyone's spouting, 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 spouting. And I understand why so many people struggle with trying to lose the weight because there's so much information out there. And this presented it perfectly. This moment at the gym presented it perfectly. Everyone was talking like they knew exactly what this guy needed. One guy was like, bro, listen, just track everything, eat 1,300 calories, and I'm like, I that at that point when when one of the dudes started saying eat 1,300 calories, that's when I was like, uh, okay, I, I usually try to avoid conflict, <laughs> but now I'm dumping, I'm just diving right into the conflict. I was like, no, 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 whoa, 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 1,300 calories is way too little calories. That's like insane. Uh, that's that's not beneficial. He's like, yeah, but bro, it's calories in, calories out. If he eats less, he's gonna lose weight. And I'm like. <sighs> This is the problem. This is the problem with diet culture. It's these moments. And, and, and I was I was just like, yeah, bro, but, you know, 1,300 is really low. So, like, you really need to eat more than that. And I'm trying to talk to the guy. Anyway, it ended up being he left the sauna and I left with him. I wasn't done being in the sauna, but I needed to go talk to this guy because I needed him <laughs> to hear a little bit of voice of reason in the 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 cloud of meatheads that we just all walked through, okay? So I walk out with him, and I'm like, hey, bro, listen. 
Don't do any of that stuff, okay? First of all, you have to find what works for you, all right? Now, now, now I'm going to give you the advice that I gave him because, like, now I'm just going to be one more voice out there, right, giving people advice on how to lose weight, which is so annoying, but I have to because I just don't feel – it's just – it's very frustrating. I don't feel like people understand the – how bad when you are overweight when you are morbidly obese how bad you want to lose the weight how bad you feel that you like you're just like i will do anything to lose the weight and that's a scary place to be because anything includes a lot anything could be 1300 calories anything could be steroids anything could i mean it could be so many unhealthy choices if you were willing to do anything. So this is my problem with with the way people talk and the, the advice people give. None of it's backed up. None of it's certified. None of it, it's just, it's just talking. And that's exactly what I'm doing, so which is, I understand is annoying, but I'm I'm really trying to like reach out to my other Morbid obese brethren and si- si- sister Ren. See, I'm an idiot. You see, don't listen to me. I'm an idiot. Okay, I'm trying to talk to my big brothers and sisters out there. Okay, if you are dying to lose weight, if you would do anything to lose weight, take a step back and take a deep breath. Don't get overstimulated with all the information out there, okay? Your weight, the, the start to your weight loss journey shouldn't include every single option of weight loss out there, okay? If you start off way too strong and you start doing way too many things all at once, none of it is gonna stick. You have to be tactical about your weight loss and you have to allow it to take time. That's the biggest thing. This guy who was sitting in that sauna, the reason all of it kicked off was like, oh, you know, bro, I'm just really I'm trying to lose like, you know, like 100 pounds and hopefully I can have it off by like, you know, like summer or fall. Hey, my guy, it's April. That's not going to happen. And if it does happen, it's all coming right back by next summer. Okay? So like... Trust me, I've been there. It's 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 just it's so crazy because it's like, well, yeah, just eat thirteen hundred calories. It'll work. It doesn't work if it doesn't last, and that's the the biggest takeaway that I want people who are starting, who maybe are hearing this because they are morbidly obese and they want to make a change, they want to lose the weight. If it doesn't last, then it doesn't work. I don't want to hear about some insane diet that you're just eating eggs or something. I just snort lines of MCT oil every day and, you know, lost 150 pounds. If it doesn't last, it doesn't work. So what my advice to you would be is to take it slow do one thing start fo- more more focus on adding things into your life than taking things away and certainly don't just think carbs are the enemy <laughs> like this dude this dude was literally literally like do not eat a single carb and i just you know i i was like well i don't know if that's true because i've lost over 100 pounds and i eat a big bowl of carbs Every day. Isn't that weird? Hey, isn't it isn't it a little weird and, uh, and strange to exclude one of the only three macronutrients that your body needs? Your body needs fats and carbs and protein. It needs them. So when you exclude one, bad things happen. And it doesn't last. Typically, it doesn't last. And we all know now, if it doesn't last, it doesn't work. Okay? So, again, 
Take it slow. Start drinking more water. Start moving more. Whatever that means to you, whether that means start running, start jogging, start walking, start getting up off the couch 25 times a day. Whatever that means to you, that's what it means to you, okay? Everyone start, everyone's starting line is different. When I started, I could do different things than when other people start, okay? So don't think like, oh, well, Tony was on the elliptical for an hour when he started at 400 pounds, so that's what I need to do. Maybe you can't do that or maybe you can do more. I don't know you, and that's the most important part of this. Nobody knows you. Everybody's different. Everybody is different, okay? So you have to be able to um, take all that information in, pick a plan that will work for you. Something, not a diet, but a plan. What is your plan? I'm going to eat lean meat. I'm going to eat complex carbs. I'm and, and The carbs that I'm going to eat are oats and chia seeds and sweet potatoes and vegetables, certain breads. The fats I'm going to have is natural peanut butter, avocados, different oils, nuts. The lean meats I'm going to have is chicken and, and ground turkey and lean bison and fish and protein powder. That's what my plan was when I started. I also tracked everything. And this is where a lot of people go back and forth, you know. But I am I am of the belief that when you are starting, when your goal is weight loss, you have to track. If you want to be successful, I think you have to track. Not forever. You don't have to track forever, but you have to at least get an idea of what you're eating so that one day you don't need to track and you can kind of eyeball things. But the problem with eyeballing things in the beginning is you have no idea what to base that eyeball judgment from. So I do believe, and this might be controversial, but I do believe if you want to lose weight, if your goal is losing weight, fat loss specifically, you have to be able to track. That means is getting a food scale, putting your shit on a food scale, measuring it. Oh, but Tony, it takes so long. Stop. Stop. If you already have that mentality at the beginning, you're not ready. And you need to figure your stuff out. I don't have the type of, I, my life's so busy. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I track every day and I will gladly compare calendars. Okay. Your boy is so flipping busy and I track everything. Not every day anymore, but I would say 85% of the time I am tracking my food. And in the beginning when my calendar was still the same, granted I had one kid instead of two, but still I tracked everything every single thing religiously. I was militant about it. And because I was like that for a year, it has now helped me to where now I don't have to track everything. I can kind of spot things, especially if I'm going out to eat. Okay. So I do believe that's something that you need to do if you want to lose weight, but that is my advice to you. Do not get overwhelmed. Do not listen to every single person. Definitely don't take steroids. I mean, the fact that that conversation got into steroids was insane. But take your time, take it slow, and find a plan that works for you that includes whole foods, veggies, proteins, carbs, and fats. I think if you're doing anything other than that, it is a gimmick diet, and it's not going to work because it's not going to last. Okay? If you have any other questions about it, like I said, I am not a professional. Definitely hire a dietitian nutritionist, not just a nutritionist, okay? Because that's a weekend certificate you can just get. Don't get one of those. Get a certified dietitian, a registered dietitian nutritionist. Go get yourself one of those and let them figure out a plan for you if that's something that you can do. If not, 
find something that works for you. Start doing some common sense stuff with the types of foods that you're eating, but definitely, obviously incorporate proteins, carbs, and fats, please. Please stop excluding carbs. Carbs are not the enemy, okay? It's not the 90s anymore. Christ. I got a little heated in there. I got a little, I got a little, I'm a little porous. I'm a little sweaty. Okay. Um, we're going to take a quick moment for our ads. Today's episode is brought to you by Ice Age Meals. Uh, I went out to the freezer and I grabbed my Ice Age Meals. This is actually what I'm going to eat as soon as I'm done with this podcast. It is uh, turkey lasagna, and it is freaking delicious. I've never had a meal from them that is not delicious and nutritious. Uh, but basically, like this is the perfect podcast to have them as uh, the sponsor because we're talking about health. We're talking about getting started, and if if food and meal planning is something that is very hard for you, uh, then I think Ice Age Meals is a great option. They use whole natural food. Um, they, they, I've been to their kitchens. I've seen the ingredients come in, they cook it fresh, and then they freeze it and ship it directly to you. It's an awesome, awesome organization. I'm going to just read you what I got in this. Uh, so these are the ingredients, Okay. There's so much bullshit out there, and I don't know if they want me cussing in this ad, but it doesn't really matter because I'm just doing this on my own. Um, there's so much bullshit out there, okay? So when you find something that you love and something that uh, is is actually has whole food in it, is actually truly organic, you got to go for it, and that's what I'm telling you this is. So these are the ingredients for my, my lunch today. Ground turkey, butternut squash, organic vine ripened tomatoes, onion, fresh garlic, fresh basil, olive oil, kosher salt, black pepper, fennel seed, and ground red chili. And that's it. And that's it. And that's it. Bro, 480 calories, 34 grams of protein, 31 grams of fat, 24 grams of uh, fat, uh, sorry, 20, 31 grams of carbs, 24 grams of fat. It is, uh, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's, I literally have one every single day. Uh, it's for me, I still meal prep. So I meal prep two meals a day and then I'll have an ice age meal. It helps me. It just, I'm so busy. It just helps take some of the pressure off of uh, meal prepping. And so that's why I do that. And especially if my meal prep, uh, doesn't last and runs out. Oh my God. Just grabbing one of those, throwing it in the microwave for four minutes and it's good to go. That's the ticket. So anyway, if you want to check them out, use my code FOCUS at checkout. It will save you some money, helps your boy out. And I'm telling you, I don't stand behind a lot of companies, okay? I don't have a lot of brands that I work with. Ice Age is one of them. I trust them. I've been to the Mecca. I've been to their their home uh, their, their home gym. <laughs> well, they do have a gym. But I've been to their home office. I've seen the kitchens. I've met the staff. I've seen how the meals are made. And uh, I take what I put in my body very, very seriously. And I think you should too. And that's why I think you should get some Ice Age meals. Use my code FOCUS at checkout. Save yourself some money. And now, back to the episode. Okay, we're going to bust through some of these questions real quick because we're already at like 48 minutes or like 50 minutes or something like that. So we gotta, we're going to move it. All right, here we go. Uh, this one I thought was hilarious and I just, it called me out so hard. So I was like, I got to talk about this because, uh, you know, I'm if I'm going to call people out, I, I got to be expected to get called out as well. And I, call, I got called out hard. This is from Rock and Maine. I'm a subscriber. I like the podcast, but when you try to sound like Chris D'Elia, it's s cringe. Just be yourself, man. Listen. <laughs> listen. Listen, okay? I am not above being influenced, okay? My wife makes fun of me for this. My wife and my sister make fun of me for this all the time. Do you want to know why? Because I'm a freaking sponge. I joke to this. I, I talk about this with Meredith all the time. Within two weeks of living in Texas, if you don't think I'm going to start saying y'all and have a slight Texas accent, 
it's literally like in my subconscious. I don't know if that means I'm psychotic, if I'm insecure. I don't know if that means I'm just freaking loony. But it is impossible for me to hang out with someone and not pick up their personality traits or or like their quirks or the way they say certain words. Something happens in my brain and I just start being a chameleon and start taking that on. Meredith will literally... Depending on who I'm talking on the phone with, I sound different, which is insane, but it's true. And so I'm just telling you. Um, So when I, (laughs) it's so embarrassing, but when I do certain things like that, now, number one, I'm just, I was a big fan of his. And so um, that sticks around, still listen to his podcast. And so it's like, if I go listening from with, uh, listening to like an hour long podcast of his, of course, I'm coming in with some of that Dalia energy. And, uh, and I think that's why I like Dalia so much because it is very close to who I am. His personality is very close to who I am already. This just like very sarcastic in the way we say things. But, um, yeah, man, I completely understand what you're saying. It's, it is eh. So cringe. Uh, but when I do that specifically, the so cringe or whatever, uh, that is more of like an ode to him because that is what he does. Uh, it, it's more of like a, I don't know, I guess I would consider that like quoting a movie or something. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, Rock and Main, I appreciate you for saying that uh, because I do. It is a so cringe. It's so cringe. Uh, but that's okay. I'm not trying to be Crystalia. I want to be. I want to be clear, especially not certain parts of Crystalia. I am not trying to be Crystalia. I just am easily influenced in my speech patterns and in my accent and in in uh, uh, certain little quirks within speech. Uh, like I was trying to be an impressionist for a long time. When I did uh, stand up comedy, I would always practice my impressions, and so. That is part of it, I guess, that never really left. Man, my bra- maybe it's just my brain's broken. I think my brain's broken, okay? Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking the podcast. And thank you for being honest and posting that. I think it was hilarious and so true. Absolutely rooted in truth. Like there's, not that I'm trying to be him, but I absolutely take on certain mannerisms from a lot of people. In here, I'm my best friend Maddie. I'm my friend Ravel. I'm I'm my brother-in-law Stephen. Like I have a lot of things that I pull from people subconsciously because when I say it, I'm like, why did I say that word like that? Am I freaking crazy? I am. I am crazy. Okay. <laughs> Rock and Maine, you really, you, you killed me with that. You slayed me with that. Uh, DW. DW. Um, that's an old cartoon. I'm 5'5", five five, weighed 210 pounds two months ago. I'm down to 183 this morning. Damn. Damn. 40 pounds in two months? DW. Were you in that sauna? Were we talking, did you hear them? Did you take their advice? Uh, No, Uh, listen, hey, okay, if it's working for you, it's working for you. Intermittent fasting, dieting, and weights. Want to get down to 160, wish me luck. I know it's not a huge weight loss. (laughs) Hey, hey, uh, I'm an idiot. It's 30 pounds. It's 30 pounds. That's 15 pounds a month, which is still a lot, a lot. I always recommend two pounds of weight loss a week is huge. That's a huge amount of weight. Two pounds every week, that's a lot of weight. So 15 pounds in one month is pretty significant, my guy. So DW, that is a lot of weight. Just make sure that you're eating enough, you know, just make sure you're eating enough. Make sure you you should still feel satiated every day. You shouldn't be starving yourself. Maybe you're not. Maybe I'm being very judgmental. I just care about you. I just care about you. So, yeah, if you're trying to get down to 160, I do wish you luck. I just, I wish, uh, I wish you also the uh, virtue of patience. Don't try to do it all at once. If you want to get down 
I I think you can. I mean, and you're five five. I think that's completely realistic. Okay, I think that's completely realistic. I just want you to be careful. Treat your body well. Treat your mind well, and that will make it last. Okay, because as we all know, it doesn't work if it doesn't last. Is it? Uh, this is from MXQIC. I'm not even going to try. Mix quick. Mix quick. Magic? Mix quick. Uh, is it normal when you were obese that your legs were really sore after three days? And how much did you do that in a workout in a week? Um, yeah, so I mean, it just, it always depends on the type of workout that I was doing. Uh, but when I started this whole thing, I worked out six days a week. That's not to say I went beast mode six days a week. There was a lot of weeks where I went beast mode three days and have like, you know, a couple mobility days and maybe an active recovery day. But I would always at least work out six days a week without fail. And my legs being sore for three days, I mean, like in the beginning for sure. You know, because I wasn't used to squatting and stuff. And, like, when I had a trainer, this was, like, six or eight years ago when I, the last time I had a trainer. But they would have me doing, like, stupid stuff. You know, it's like, it's this thing. It's like, uh, you're 400 pounds? I know what you're going to do. You're going to lunge from here to the next city. And that's what you're going to do. That's your workout. And it's like, hey, man, okay, I can't. And that's going to ruin my body, wreck my body. And I'm going to be so sore that tomorrow I'm not going to be able to move. And is that really the point of all this? No, the point is to gradually lose weight and to become healthy. And so <laughs> I feel like a lot of people try to take on too much too soon. And so you're sore for three days. And, and when you're sore for that long, it makes it harder to come back to the gym. And it makes it harder to keep ba keep back. And so I really... I really think when you do stuff like that, you're hurting yourself more than helping yourself. And uh, at a certain point, going hard or going beast mode has diminishing returns. And uh, I didn't say that word right, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Just take it easy, all right? Still take it hard, but, you know, take it easy. This sounds completely inappropriate, and we're just going to keep moving. This is from Rubas. Uh, and I just pulled this one up because is so perfect for what I was talking about earlier it, with Meredith, my wife, and her support and um, being on the airplane and things like that. Rubas, behind every great man is an even greater woman. Your wife is a gem, my friend. What an amazing thing to have someone as supportive as her in your corner. Always rooting for you, brother. And... I want to say thank you. Thank you for seeing that. Uh, that was actually a comment from my obese to marathon video that just popped up that I, I thought was pretty interesting. Um, because in the obese to marathon, you see how supportive Meredith it is. And I don't look at it like behind every great man is a great woman. I really believe to have, have a successful marriage where two people are really on the same team, you have to, there's no behind. You have to be walking together side by side through all the bullshit that life tries to throw at you because the second that you try to be like i'm the leader of this family yeah but also it's not 1950 so like cool it a little you know um i'm not saying like you know whatever we're not going to get into all that shit but I do feel like if you want a successful marriage and both people to be happy and and both people feel supportive you need to walk side by side. And I feel like that is something that Meredith and I do really well. When she needs me, I am there. And when I need her, she is there. And we always stay in constant communication. You know, I have my own lane of things that I do. Meredith has her own lane of things that she does. But we're going down the same road together. And that is so, so important. And I could talk, dude, we should do a whole episode on relationships, okay? Because I like, I broke up with Meredith so many times. I called off our wedding 
<laughs> okay? Now, that should be its own episode, the relationship episode. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. If you have any questions about a relationship, if you have any questions about relationships, boyfriends, girlfriends, family members, whatever, let's get into it. That's something we've never really talked about on this, but I love talking about relationships and human relationships and human connections. I feel like I'm pretty good at it. I feel like I'm I I have the <laughs> the human mind. <laughs> I don't know. As a documentary filmmaker, I love telling people stories and to be able to tell someone's story you have to know what makes a person tick and i love finding out what makes a person tick and once you find out what makes a person tick you find out the motivation behind everyone and you you can really start to see that and so that is something that has helped meredith and i a lot you know because in our early relationship we did not have good communication at all neither of us and that is something that we've both worked on together. Um, and yeah, so we will have a relationship episode. But thank you for saying that. But my wife is not behind me. She is right next to me, taking the brunt of this world on right next to me. And uh, I love that girl. Ooh, I love that girl. It's crazy. When you're with someone for 16 years, it's like that's a different type of bond, you know? That's a different type of bond. For with someone for 16 years and we're 34, bro, come at us. We're unstoppable. I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, like, oh yeah, that's the clip we're gonna use when you get divorced. <laughs> no. Um I saw this TikTok, and this is this is related, so I'm just gonna say it because we're talking about relationships, but like it was this this TikTok uh, uh, with this woman saying like, "Oh, uh, my husband and I were going to get a divorce, and my dad called me and and and, to and told me this. Be careful before you get this divorce. Really think about it because when you break up with someone or when you get a divorce from someone, you're just trading this person's problems for someone else's problems because everybody has their shit. Everyone has their issues." I have put my issues out there for everyone to see, okay? Like, I mean, imagine dealing with me 24-7. <laughs> it's not easy, okay? It is not easy. And it's not easy dealing with Meredith 24-7, but we work together so well. We are absolutely best friends, and there is no one that I'd rather hang out with than Meredith. Nobody. And that is because we've been able to talk and because we were able to be, we've been able to build that healthy relationship. And she is not without her faults and her problems. And I am obviously not without my faults and my problems. Um, but we're working on it together, always, constantly. And so before you decide to end a relationship, really, really think about it. Because it's true, man. You were just going to trade their problems for someone else's, you know. The grass is always greener, as they say, until you get over there and you find out that grass is infested with snakes. Okay? Okay. You know what? This is a good place to end it. Okay? I mean, I don't know what we're trying to do here. Are we trying to break podcast records? All right? I'm already on over an hour. Who am I? Joe Rogan? Who am I going to talk for two more hours? Bro, can you imagine a three-hour podcast? It's. A, I mean, I guess that's different because he actually has, he actually has someone to talk to, and I'm literally this is just ramblings of a crazy person at this point. An hour in, if you're still hanging around, an hour in, you are listening to the ramblings of a crazy person. So thank you, and you know what that makes you? That makes you La Familia, because everyone who's made it to the end of the podcast knows. When you make it to the end of one of these podcasts, you're a part of the familia. You're a part of the very few, okay? The very, the staggeringly few, <laughs> I will admit, because I can see the YouTube analytics. And it's just like a, it, my YouTube analytics look like a slide, right? The start of the video, all the way down to the very few, the very few. You, you right here, right now, watching this freaking, mm, thank you. 
Yes, I appreciate you and thank you so much because you're now part of the familia. I give you every week a familia phrase and this is a way of me knowing who you are and um, when you post in the comments, leaving the familiar phrase in the comments, sending me the familiar phrase in an Instagram DM, leaving me the familiar phrase on an Instagram post so I know that you are a member of the familiar and I appreciate you so freaking much. You have no idea. I think we all know what the familiar phrase this week is, okay? It doesn't work if it doesn't last. Please, post it everywhere so people start to realize if it doesn't, it does not work if it does not last. And that's just like the biggest takeaway from this episode, I think. And uh, yeah, I hope that, you know, I hope that helped. I hope that helped. Oh, I did have a quote. I did have a quote. I'm going to leave you with a quote. And this is, this is only for the familiar, right? Because there's no way in hell someone's listening to all that. Even We just had familiar members drop off because they're like, all right, he said the phrase, I'm out. We even had familiar phrases. We, familiar members drop off. Now this is really, this is really just basically one person. <laughs> um, the quote is, someone could take the hand you've been dealt and win with it. And I think that's such a great quote and just such a good mindset to take into this week. Someone could take the hand you've been dealt and win with it. And that's true. So the second you start to have a pity party for yourself, the second you start to give yourself all these excuses as to why you're not attaining the goals that you want, remember, someone could take your exact situation and figure out a way to fight through, to spin it, and to win with it. So why aren't you? What is it about you that is not allowing yourself to fight for it, to go after those things that you want? Because someone else could, so you should. I mean, why not end it there, you know? Shit. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Peace. <sighs> Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Feels good to be back. <laughs> oh, fuck it. I'm leaving it in. All right. Bye.